Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us today is the senior economics writer for the Wall Street Journal, Mr. Steve Moore. His newest book is Who is the Fairest of Them All? And Steve, thanks so much for being Hi, with Kathleen. us today. Great to be with you. Well, after meeting with President Obama yesterday, Speaker Boehner said that he was very confident a deal will be reached to avert this so-called fiscal cliff. Are you as confident a deal will be reached? Well, it depends a lot on what that deal is. I mean, Republicans could cave in and give Barack Obama what he wants, and that would be a deal. So I think the devil really is in the details. I think um, when we talk about the fiscal cliff, I'm very frustrated with the whole discussion of how this has been talked about in the media for the last two weeks. Now, let me make a couple points first. The stock market has lost almost 700 points since the election. Everybody's saying, oh my God, it's the fiscal cliff. We're gonna fall. That's not the reason that the, the stock market's lost 700 points. We've known for a year we were gonna reach this point of a fiscal cliff. This is an Obama sell-off of stocks because Barack Obama is very bearish on stocks and he's very, uh, uh, kind of has very backward ideas about how to run the economy. Mm -hmm. People are fearful and they're selling their stocks. So, this has nothing to do with the fiscal cliff. Now, on the fiscal cliff, there's really two issues here. There's the tax issue about whether we're gonna raise all these tax rates, which I think would be a catastrophe for the economy. The other side of the equation is all of these automatic spending cuts that are supposed to happen in January. And you know what? I actually think those would be a good idea. I think that would be good for the economy to see some cuts in spending. So what are some of the ideas that you are hearing about that might be put on the table here? Well, the big, uh, Mexican standoff right now is Republicans actually have said, look, we'll uh, negotiate on uh, taxes, which is a big move for them. For the last 20 years, they've said no to no ta to new taxes. Uh, but they've put the line in the sand uh, basically saying we're not going to raise tax rates on anybody. And that's exactly the right position. Um, raising tax rates right now, especially on investment, capital gains, dividends, small businesses, would be a catastrophe for the economy. I mean, this is an economy that's very fragile right now. The recovery seems like it's losing steam. It's not gaining steam. We got lousy jobs numbers uh, this week. This is not an economy that's healthy. I can't imagine a dumber idea than loading all these new taxes on investment. And by the way, business investment is the sort of seed core that leads to a growing economy in the future. In the last nine months, business investment has been negative. Why in the world would you want to raise taxes on investment? It makes no sense. So I think Republicans need to, and I think they will, take a very principled position that these tax rate increases on the rich that Barack Obama is talking about would be very negative for the economy, very anti-business, and would cost the economy jobs. Whether it would cause us to, to slip into a double-dip recession, I mean, God, I hope not. I mean, that would cause severe trauma for American families if we went into another recession, but it could. Are you concerned that Republicans could cave on the tax issue? I am a little bit. I think we're all a little bit concerned. I uh, met with Mitch McConnell, who's, as you know, the minority leader in the Senate for the Republicans, and interviewed him for our paper, The Wall Street Journal. And he was pretty tough. He said, look, there's some things we're not going to compromise on, and we're not going to uh, cave in on our principles. And this idea of not raising tax rates. And by the way, this isn't because we're trying to r protect rich people. It's because who are these people who are in the top 2 or 3% that Barack Obama says can pay more? There's small business owners and investors and their small business uh, operators. Well, look, if you take money out of the small business, they have less money to hire people. That should be a truth that is self-evident. Somehow, the president doesn't seem to understand that. Now, uh, the day after the election, I interviewed Forbes Media CEO Steve Forbes. He said, <laughs> I love Steve Forbes. With, he said within yeah. a year, within the next year, we'll fall back into recession because of a second mm -hmm. Obama term. Uh, do you see that happening? Boy, it could happen because this, look, the last four years have been just a catastrophe for the economy. I mean, we should be in a very robust uh, cycle of growth right now. It's never happened under Obama. He says, you know, I averted a great uh, depression. I think his policies are actually leading us down that course, quite frankly. I mean, if I were advising Barack Obama on his second term to get the economy moving, what I'd say, Mr. President, with all due respect, look at all the things you did in your first term and do exactly the opposite in your second term. I mean, I really would, because almost everything this president wants to do on the economy is negative for the economy. It's not positive. It's a real testament to the strength and the animal, animal spirits of our private sector. They can grow with the guy in the White House who hates business and hates profits. Mm -hmm. So if we continue down this path, where do you see us in, say, two years? Well, you know, I'm an optimist. You know, <laughs> I've always been an optimist. So I, I'd like to think we can, we can 
uh, we can get through this. But I think Barack Obama uh, has to start understanding economic common sense. I and mean, he's the president, so he has an enormous impact uh, from a policy perspective. Um, it, but, you know, look, if we did some right things, you know, the president did say, I want to reform the tax system. Great. He says he wants to reform the entitlements. Great. If you do those kinds of things, yeah, I think it'll help the economy. But I, I'm not quite as dire as Steve Forbes is in saying that we're headed to a second recession. But he might be right. And given the fragility of this recovery, that's certainly possible. All right. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner says that we need to get rid of the debt ceiling. What do you make of that? I think it's crazy. Look, the, one of the greatest cancers in our economy right now is the debt is this enormous debt. The only time Congress, and I'm saying this of both parties, because both parties are responsible for creating this debt, both the Republicans and Democrats, I think, are partners in crime on this. The only time we ever get serious about dealing with the debt is when there's a debt ceiling and we come across, you know, to that brink. And if that's what it takes to get the spending cuts necessary to uh, reduce this obese $4 trillion government, then I'm all for it. I mean, we've got to get serious. This is not a fire drill. This is the real thing. We have a $16 trillion national debt. If we stay on the course that Tim Geithner wants, we're going to borrow another trillion dollars year after year. There's a very famous moment um, about nine months ago where Tim Geithner went in front of the House Budget Committee and he said, I don't have any ideas for reducing the deficit. Well, what kind of leadership is that? Do you anticipate more rounds of quantitative easing within the next year or two? Well, most people probably don't even know what quantitative easing is, but uh, as you know, uh, quantitative easing is this very expansionary monetary policy that we've seen from the Federal Reserve uh, in the last five years. And Ben Bernanke has just been, we call him at the Wall Street Journal, Helicopter Ben, because it's almost like what Ben Bernanke does is go you know, in a helicopter over major cities and drop $100 bills out the window. So this has been um, a, an unprecedented experiment in very, very expansive monetary policy where they've just got the printing presses on overdrive. One of the things, by the way, that the Fed has been doing, which is dangerous, in my opinion, that Americans aren't paying close enough attention to, is the left hand of the government, the Treasury, is issuing all this debt, right? Then you've got the right hand of the government, the Federal Reserve, buying the debt. Right now, do you know which and what entity in the in the entire world owns more debt than any other institution. It's not the Chinese government. They own the second amount, most amount. The most is owned by the Federal Reserve. So think about this. The left hand of the government, the Treasury is issuing the debt. The right hand of the government, the uh, Feds, are buying the debt. And where does the Federal Reserve get the money to buy the debt? Well, of course, they print it. That strategy that I just talked, that just you know, uh, outlined, that's what's uh, called the Argentina, Bolivia, Mexico model. I mean, that's what countries do. They monetize their debt when they get into trouble. Well, that hasn't worked out so well for those countries, and I very much worry that it's not going to work out so well for the United States if we continue to do it. President Obama, do you see him doing anything about entitlements? I think he may simply because we're running out of time. I mean, the biggest event that this country is going to face over the next five, 10, 20 years. Um, one of the biggest um, demographic events in the history of this country is that starting very soon, 80 million baby boomers are gonna start retiring. This is the biggest generation in American history. Uh, that means 80 million people who are now sort of in the peak of their earning years and paying taxes into the system, 10 years from now, most of them won't be paying into the system, they'll be collecting benefits. This is the Titanic headed to that iceberg, and we don't have a lot of time to waste. The window is closing on reform. I, I really shudder to think we're going to have to wait another four years before we deal with the crisis of Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. I'm tired of these Democrats saying, Social Security is not a problem, it's paying for itself. No, Social Security is running a debt now, too. Steve, last question for you. In the wake of the recent presidential election, do Republicans need to change their message on the economy? They do. I think it's very clear that they need to um, learn to reach out to uh, Hispanic and uh, Asian voters. This is the voting group that Republicans really lost big time in the last election. And I don't, as a conservative, that troubles me because we should be doing very well, especially with Asians. Asians are the wealthiest uh, ethnic group in America. Asians make more money than whites do. Um, so there's something we're not connecting with Asian voters and especially obviously with Hispanics. And I think that's partly the kind of very um, harsh anti-immigration language of the party. I think if, if the party moves to a more inclusive 
uh, policy with respect to immigration. I think you'll get Asians and uh, Hispanics moving back into the Republican Party, and that could create, let's hope, a kind of permanent governing majority for the Republicans. All right, Steve Moore, thanks so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Thank you.